Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining today's webinar all about eComs, a brand new web based tool developed by ECA, which provides members with an easy to use solution to ensure compliance with the Electrotechnical Assessment Specification, or EAS. Today's presentation will be led by ECA's technical manager, Gary Parker, uh, who you can see in, in the middle there. We're also joined by ECA members and early ecoms adopters, Ruth Devine, who is managing director of SJD Electrical, and Darren Cranis, managing director of Cranis Technology Services. I'll shortly hand over to Gary to kick off the webinar. But before I do that, uh, just to remind you that you can use the question mark button on your screen there at any time during today's presentation to ask our panel a question, a question about ecoms or about the EAS. We've set some time aside to address as many of your questions as possible at the end of today's session. This webinar is recorded and the full replay will be available on ECA's YouTube channel. That's at youtube.com forward slash ECA live. Be sure to also check out other replays from the ECA webinar series while you're there, covering all sorts of technical and business topics. And with that said, I hope you enjoy today's session and over to you, Gary. Thank you, Omar. Good afternoon, everybody. I hope you're doing well and enjoying some sunshine where you are. Um, so what we've got for you today is a brief presentation about ecoms, and then we're going to have a little chat with both Ruth and Darren as we go through and look at some of the features within ecoms, and then hopefully we can go to the floor and answer some of your questions. So to start us off, hopefully we can all see a nice blue screen there with ecoms. Uh, if we can, great. If we can't, then somebody will shout and tell me. If you can, we'll go through what we've got here, a bit of an introduction, what it is, what it does, how can members access it, and a bit of help and support information for you. So first of all, EAS. Uh, Omar mentioned the Electrotechnical Assessment Specification. We'll cover this in a little bit more detail later, but this is the primary document that certification bodies use to assess enterprises. So it's the minimum, it's the base standard for what people such as Searchor or NICEIC will look for when they come out and do an assessment. There's a specific element that we're going to look at today, which is personnel and the requirements behind it. There's many changes to the EAS document in recent years, but this is the key one that we're going to focus on today. And it talks about the enterprise employing persons to carry out electrical te electro technical work who are competent or adequately supervised. The enterprise shall demonstrate that all employed persons are competent. So it's requiring businesses and enterprises to demonstrate competence, not just to assume. And this harks back to the Electricity at Work Regulations, 1989, where a clause talks about no person being engaged in work or activity where they are not sufficiently skilled. Within the EAS document, there's an appendix 10, which then goes into further detail, and it repeats that clause from the Electricity at Work regulations. And it also says a sample and a, a suggested way of ensuring that you as a business meet the requirements of not only the EAS, but the Electricity at Work regulations. It's a four step approach of identifying the level of, of operative, their skill identifying the degree of risk in the nature of the work that they are working upon, cross-referencing those, and then making sure that we've got some sort of format, some tables, some chart to show where people sit. And even more helpfully, Appendix 10 of the AS goes into yet more detail, and it shows you those four stages there on the right-hand side. This is an absolute requirement, and something that all ECA members, and indeed anybody who's registered with a competent person scheme, must do. So we thought it would be good for ourselves and for our members to make a software package to help you do that, to try and take away some of the burden for you. And that's what we're looking at today. It's called Ecoms. Ecoms is a free to use member benefit. So it doesn't have any additional cost for ECA members. It takes all of the requirements of the EAS and a little bit more, and it allows you to record the operative details, identify and assign skill levels to those operatives, look at the nature and the degree of risk of the work that they're doing, and then it helps you work out what level of supervision is needed. And if that sounds roughly familiar, it, it should be. It was on one of the slides uh, a few moments ago. So Ecoms has been developed to help you guys compete with the EES and work with it. But it does a little bit more than that. 
it's not just for electro technical operators it does uh, allow you to put in information about non electro technical operators you can add training and documents to individuals and company documents as well so you can store information about your business be it health and safety policies be it calibration you can put anything you wish in there it allows you to create ongoing observations so you can monitor what people are doing and observe them and record it so it's helpful for auditing purposes it will allow you to set up alerts action alerts so as if something is needing to be reviewed in six months time 12 months time a little flag will pop up if there's some element of danger or uh, harm in there it will flag that up as well it allows you to track your workforce and also monitor staff and make sure that they are in the right position with the right supervision at the right time now any eca nominated rep can access ecoms it's free ecoms.co.uk uh, eca.co.uk forward slash ecoms will get you there there is a test account but we don't need that one for today now only the nominated rep will have access to ecoms although they can then create an additional rep to get into it you must have an eca web account and it is a web-based service it will work on mobile phones so it will work on tablets as well but when you reduce the size down it's a, uh, it, it's a uh, live website that will reduce down and reduce the number of boxes so if you are on site you can still take photos and add information on to it as well so that's just a quick overview of what ecoms is now what we'll do is we'll invite ruth uh, ruth divine to speak up ruth hiya you all right there ruth yeah not bad how are you gary i'm good thank you it's very warm up here today i don't it's know why it's suddenly warm summer you have this effect on it's something nice to whinge about uh, Ruth, can you just give uh, the listeners a bit of an overview about yourself and what you do and where you've been helping out with uh, EAS in the past? Yeah, so I think back in oh, early 2019, maybe the end of 2018, Steve Martin, who was the ex-technical director of ECA, he was a representative on the EAS management committee. Um, obviously, he went off to bigger and better things, should we say, um, but that left the void EAS. So I stepped in as chair of the skills committee and chair of test to kind of give a skills perspective and help with the updating of the document. Because at the time, the document that was in place was a 2015 version, so it was quite old. Obviously, Grenfell happened and all the eyes are on the construction industry and how they are gonna make sure the people working for them are safe and effective and competent. Um, and we also, we're in, a good, we're in a good position anyway, because we have EAS and we've had it for a long time. But this focus on competence and skills, I think you can see from the changes in the document that the intention is to really make sure companies are engaging the right kind of employed persons. And that covers subcontractors, agency labour, temporary workers, and just people that you have employed for you on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so how how are you going to show when the new requirements come in september how are you going to show as a small business or a large business that your operatives are competent how do you know the type of things that they're doing so generally if you're a small company you have you have good eyes on, on what your people are doing but there's no way of recording it so a recorded system helps you to kind of build that value in the business and show a story and it might be that there are areas that you observe improvements required then you can build on that and you can show evidence and you can use it as a training platform really so um no, i'm really pleased eca is invested in, in developing the software to help members you might not see the need for it right now but it will be coming in future assessments so it is important to kind of if you haven't got something where you're observing and recording and tracking people's training and competence this is quite a nifty little tool that will help you do that so you mentioned things like the Grenfell disaster there. Um, was that part of the rationale behind EAS creating a requirement for competence and then ECA making ecoms? Uh, I think so. I obviously came in probably about a year and a half, two years after those discussions. So the updating was already in, in underway by the committee, but it wasn't finalised. So there's quite a bit of work around qualifications and skills. And you'll see that some of the things in Appendix 4 have tightened up now. But it is a document for the assessment bodies really and not so much the employers this is why it's helpful to have something in the middle like the software tool that helps you don't want to be reading 60 odd pages of eas you just need to know what you need to do as a business and you need to do it quickly and simply and easily don't you really so this is that bit between the manual that nobody ever reads and is not really intended for businesses to read 
um, and to help you run your quality management of your employed persons better, really. So, so taking off your EAS hat and putting on your member contracting hat now, how do you think ecoms will add a benefit to your business? What do you feel that the value is in there for, for your organisation? Well, I think we, we already use like HR online software, but there isn't any mechanism for recording what you've seen people do. How do you know they can install that? Like a new apprentice, they come out and they're at standard, but what experience do they have? Have they installed that big panel board? Have they installed that kind of cable? Have they worked on this security system? It's, it's building a narrative that you can do quite quickly and easily to demonstrate the competencies there. And I think as the building safety bill comes in and we're looking at high risk buildings and public sector buildings, people are going to be asking more of the question is they're not just qualified to the right standard, but how do you know they have the right experience? How are they still doing the job they're supposed to be doing? And, and just having like an observation every three months, six months, depends on how old they are, how long they've been working for you, what kind of work you're doing, but doing something simple is a good way of having that quality management system without having to spend thousands and thousands of pounds on having a QMS system. I suppose what you're hinting at there is there's a difference between qualifications and competence. Yeah, and I think people confuse the apprenticeship standard of a qualification, whereas it's not, it's the whole, it's an occupational standard to a level of an endpoint assessment, so it's more than a qualification, there's a qualification inside it, um, and that is the recognised best way into the industry, but there are other ways into the industry. But once you've achieved your competence at a level, then you do need to maintain it. And that's where CPD comes in. That's where experience comes in. That's where supervision comes in. That's where motivation comes in. So it's all different things. If somebody's going slightly off track, do you record that? Do you keep an eye on them? Do you restrict their duties possibly? It's, it's all these things that probably happen naturally to a good business owner or a good QS or could be both, but this puts a system behind it. And, with that record behind you, it does add value and it makes your business a bit stronger, I think. Brilliant. And speaking of good businesses, that's a good time to bring in Darren. Hi, hello, Darren, you all right? Good afternoon, Gary. Hope you're well. That was a smooth segue into you there, wasn't it? Did you see that? Yes, thank um, you so much. Darren, as, uh, as Omar says, you're a, another member contractor. Now, you weren't involved in the development of the EAS, unlike Ruth. Uh, was but well, you have been involved a little bit with looking at e-coms is that right uh yeah we were fortunate enough to be asked to trial the software as a, as a sort of a, a dummy customer and, and put some live data in there and, and give it a trial out and uh, and see how that would work for our business brilliant how, how, was, how was your business found using e-coms well, i think everyone was looking at this in the market about sort of the new certainly a lot a lot of conversation about the EAS and, and, and what did it mean and what do you need to do uh, and the good thing about this is you don't have to worry about that side of things so what we found is instantly we can make we've got a training matrix for our company so all our contractors all our employees straight away we can we can put their information straight in to ecoms and at a click of a button we've, we've got the entire training matrix there which is not only good for the EAS competency, so that that sort of worry goes away, but also for any third party auditors that we may have who also will request this information. Hmm. Well, that's good then. So it, it's not just a, a one trick pony, it's got other benefits to it. Yeah, quite, we probably more frequently get asked for our training matrix, um, which was probably accumulated by some spreadsheets, uh, like many small businesses. By, by third party auditors and uh, and our clients, um, it's nice to have all this in one place so you only have to manage um, you know, one portal. Fantastic. And just as a, a quick snippet, how have you found using e-coms yourself, Darren? Uh, I gave it um, a really good go. I mean, within a couple of hours, I think we, we put everyone on there. So it's very easy to create a record for an employee and then not only add in um their electrical qualifications but we're actually using it to add other in um high level access ladder training ipath anything like that can go in you see so you start building up that that training matrix for your employees and your contractors so it's quite simple to use and you, you can just upload a certificate with it as well so you've got it all in one place 
Brill. And speaking of which, if the wonders of the modern technology allow, hopefully the screen has now changed. So hopefully the delegates today can sit and see a live version of Econ's running. And as uh, we said earlier, all ECA members do have access to this via the website. So you just need to log in with your nominated ref details. But hopefully we can all see uh, a version of Econ's running in the background now. And if it's all right with you two guys, we'll just jump onto a live demo. But do feel free to chip in and jump in and uh, and give us any feedback or any suggestions that you want. So for the members out there watching, this is what you'll see once you've downloaded uh, and accepted the terms and conditions and jumped into Econ's. This is just a test version. So we've got my company details here, which are pulled down from the ECA website. Uh, it will have your details on. If the details are wrong, get in touch with us. We'll, uh, we can update them nice and easily. The easiest place to start with is almost always with the helm, which nobody ever starts with, but uh, it's always nice to. There's a really good little ES guide in there and a really good little uh, website uh, and a user manual. If you are getting lost, the user manual is pretty handy and pretty good to go back to. Um, if you ever need to navigate your way around, this company or your company name will take you home. You've got your operative details in there. We've got our training records, as Darren mentioned, you can have training records in. Documents, be they individual documents or company documents. And then you can see some observations on there. On the right hand side, we've got our little action alert. So this is where we can click upon something and hopefully see anything that is due for being looked at again. So if I put an alert on something, it will remind me. And then if we've got any major concerns, a big warning flag will pop up there. I think probably for the sake of this demo and for the, uh, for the ease of use, we'll have a look at adding an operative and putting some information about them. And that's probably the easiest way of, uh, of getting to grips with Econs. The details will uh, then follow soon. So I've already got some operatives in here. We've got a chap called Daryl Pramis in there. Where I got that name from. Uh, we've got a chap called uh, Gary Parker and a few other different people as we're going through there. And you can see that there's a nice range of different colours, red, amber, green colours on there. If we add a new one in, let's put somebody's name in. I can't think of anybody's name. There, that looks like that. In. No, don't know where that came from. Uh, reference card. Sorry about that. Reference card number. We can put any card number we want. If you've got an ECS card, you can add some details in. Anything that's red is mandatory. Anything that's green is optional. Now we get to pick a job role. So we get to see where that person fits and what their qualifications are. Now, I'll pop Ruth in as, a, uh, as an electrician. Ruth in as an electrician. And it's automatically imported some information there, a job level. It's given us a skill level in that sense. Level one is the lower skilled side of person in uh, e-comms. Level two is the middle skill. Level three is the highest skill level equivalent to a qualified supervisor. These details are all taken from the EAS, so it's just mapped across from that. The degree of risk in the electrical technical work we're doing is also brought in from EAS, so it's either low, medium, or high. Now, the degree of risk with the work doesn't change, whether or not it's a level one person or a level three person. The nature of the work is always either very dangerous or not very dangerous. So we'll pop medium in for there now. Ruth started on the 13th, and we'll see. Hopefully, we'll find Ruth on there now. Where you are, Ruth? There you are. In, in the middle, in orange. And we can click on you and then find some details out about Ruth. And again, AS uh, flagged up in the background, written instructions, periodic QS involvement on site. We can go into a little bit more detail on that by clicking on the EAS flag. And we've got that skills matrix we saw from the PowerPoint presentation earlier, straight out of Appendix 10 from the EAS. So this person, because of the nature of the work and the nature of their training, will be needing written instruction and some periodic QS involvement on site. They'll also sit nicely in this level two operative right in the middle there. And then as we scroll down, a little bit more information. Which is quite handy. Now, I think I've made a slight mistake. Oh, so yeah, what's that? I think that part there is really powerful. Uh, and it okay. has altered slightly how we have approached some of our works with our employees because it may be okay you thinking where your employees and contractors are but if you really want to look at that to how the EAS looks at this 
and that's a really good um you know chart there of, of where they would put your employees so it's a great perspective on perhaps you know members might adjust how they um do a bit of thinking bit of thinking of who they put on the jobs and also it, it might also then show any skills gaps or where they want to upskill and sort of retrain some of their uh, employees or contractors you see so i found it really good looking at that matrix speaking of skills gaps actually good point let's say ruth's now just finished off lots of qualifications and now being put down as a registered electrician let's say from an electrician to a registered electrician down the bottom there skill level has jumped up from level two to a level three she seemed as being a slightly more competent person than before the degree of work is still medium, because Ruth's still working on that same project, but we can save that and have a look. And the background's moved from amber to green. So if we have a look in, uh, in the little AS flag, we can see she's moved from being written and periodic supervision to requiring verbal and remote supervision from QA. So this is really good for firms who've got uh, multiple sites running or QS is running around quite a lot to be able to justify actually this is what i need to do i was speaking to a member not that long ago whose company didn't quite understand the role of the qs and thought the whole point of a qs was just to countersign paperwork that's not it there does need to be some well, enough supervision involved there so in this case we need slightly less but as you can see there's a nice red element to the uh, to the grid there if we ever went up there we're going to need a bit more supervision a bit more involvement uh, once you've added an operative and edited them and changed them, you can also put some information to them. So you can add a training record. You can add a document. So that might be their CV, for instance. You can, as Ruth mentioned, start putting in observations about that person. So observed by, mark observed, near miss, and observed on, Ruth, you had a near miss. We'll put you down for yesterday. I'll try harder next time. Put you down for an EMS tomorrow. So now we've got some observations, and then you can very quickly start building up a bit of a history of what has been happening. And as Ruth said earlier, looking at not just qualifications but competence and continual uh, improvement, hopefully, of those operatives. And as Darren said as well, making sure that you've got access to these little EAS flashes does help. Speaking of which, actually, if we go and have a look at all our operatives. As a lump, we've got quite a lot of people embedded in there now. So if I pop on the ES there for the group, we can now see at a glance exactly how many we've got in exactly which boxes. So we've got one person who needs very close and detailed supervision. The vast majority in this business, fortunately, are all in the green box, but we do have a few in the amber box. Now, this I would imagine would be quite easy for the auditors. Um, Darren, you're Quite heavily involved in audits when the some of the person schemes and the certification bodies come out to see you guys. I suppose from a, a business point of view, you want to try and make their lives relatively easy and help them out, I guess. Yeah, as simple and as quick as possible would be uh, the words we want to use. I guess from a if, if, if somebody came out to do an assessment on your business tomorrow and they asked how your proving you've got competent people and the right supervision. As you say, a lot of spreadsheets in the past, bits and paper here, there and everywhere. This is a relatively quick and easy process, I guess. Um, yeah, this makes it very quick. You know, it, it, it's a couple of minutes just to organise this now, isn't it? Rather than maybe a couple of hours or a couple of days. Really? And Ruth, from an EAS point of view, was this the sort of thinking behind creating this competency matrix to be able to help businesses look at the staff? I think the EAS, again, it's before my time, Appendix 10 has been there a long time and that's based on HSE. Um, but I think everybody wants quality installations and safe employees, don't they, and safe workers. So the vision has always been to try and protect people, whether that's customers or, or workers. And, and this is a good way of just a good way of doing it, really. Um, our last audit we always get out the gold cards and show the matrix this is a much easier way of assigning that level of risk and kind of looking at the nature of the work we're doing so um yeah 
Just a, a, an electronic version of a of a paper system, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, I don't know if uh, any of the delegates out there watching have got any questions on this or anything related to this uh, in particular. Have you seen anything come through, Orla? Yes, we've got a few questions here. Um, first Excellent. question, with regards to recording CPD, will the IET and Engineering Council accept the use of ECOMS as a method of recording CPD as required for professional registrations? I think most of the uh, Engineering Council and the IET website, there's a CPD tracker on there. Um, I'm guessing it's, it would be useful, but I don't think they would accept it. You've got to log your information separately. So if, even if you did re record it on a spreadsheet or on ecoms, you'd still have to upload it into the um, either IET or SIPC um, tracker for CPD as well. But I would imagine it would certainly help. It's a it's a one stop place for saving everything. I've got it's a paper all over from webinars and courses that I've been on over the last couple of months, probably like a lot of people have. This is a nice easy place to put it rather than just dumping it in the back there. Thanks, Gary. A um, couple more questions. Um, can eRAMs query the ecom system while generating RAMs on the competency of a workforce? Again, I'll, I'll jump in on that one. Uh, sorry, Darren and Ruth, if you want to jump in, please do. But the, the, they've been worked on and developed by the same people, but there is no interaction at the moment with them. Ecoms has been created to purely tick the box of the EAS requirement. However, depending on how successful it is and how much members take it up, there is a phase two planned and development and suggestions are always welcome. So if there is any suggestions, please do uh, come in. We've got a log a problem section on the screen there where you can always put some information in. And ecoms at eca.co.uk is the email address to drop any comments or suggestions through. So if you do have any ideas, thoughts, or ways that it can be developed, please do let us know. One, one thing that is on the wish list um, is linking up with the ECS employer portal. So from my perspective as an employer, I use employer portal a lot. Um, it would be great to have that cross-referencing, but this does more. So if the two were to sync, that would be fantastic. So the more people that use it now and say they want that, then the quicker, the quicker you do development, hopefully. At the end of the day, this is a, it, it, it's not a tool for me as ECA staff, it's a tool for you guys as members. So the more people who, as you say, use it and uh, give us feedback and suggestions, brilliant. If we can develop it and help out, that's kind of our reason for being. I think one other thing is it is quite flexible. So things are quite open. So you can be quite descriptive if you're running toolbox talks or you're doing something that's very bespoke. You can, you can customise it as you wish, really. So there's no limits. It doesn't have to be all electrical. It can be. Very, very flexible. Absolutely. And you, you mentioned about training earlier. We can add training types and training records to uh, all or sort of operatives if we wanted to. So we can put some course in there. Uh, we can say that all these operatives receive this apprenticeship on this particular date, and we'll save that without a document. So they've all had a new training record added to them. Now you can do that individually, or if you've done a like you say, a toolbox talk or a group training, you can put that in as a as a mass uh, effect. So you can always head back to the home page there and see all your operatives again, and then you can add things in individually as well if you wish. And you can also put uh, more operatives in as and when you start using them. Anybody else out there, Omar? I've got a, uh, an easy question here for you, Gary, it, uh, but one definitely worth reiterating. Is this free to use as an ECA member? Oh, absolutely. There's the Yorkshire in me. Yes, it is. ECA members can uh, can access this, this from straight from the website. It's a free member benefit. There's no cost in it. It's all built into your membership. But again, the more feedback we get, the more we can do with it. It's uh, it's good to get feedback, comments, thoughts, and suggestions. So do please have a play with it. There is other systems, I'm sure, out there. As Darren mentioned, there's spreadsheets and there's lots of other ways that you can contain your competence and training and matrices and the like. This is there, it's free, you can have a go. If you don't like it, there's no benefit to you whatsoever and you don't have to use it. But if you do like it, it's a free tool, help yourself to it. 
Yeah, thanks, Gary. Um, a question about the, the platform, uh, another one for you, Gary. Under job roles, there doesn't appear to be job roles for specialist installers within the fire and security sector. Uh, are there plans to add these? Yes, there's plans to add lots of other job roles. Uh, the, the initial concept was to tick the boxes for EAS, uh, which was dealing with electrical technical in the 1671 category. But we are looking at uh, specialists for fire, for high voltage and the like. So we look looking to add more job descriptions in there and job roles and then quantify that against uh, skill level. Uh, actually, that was a good point. We do have a option within here for a job role of non-electrical person. So we can put a non-electrical person in and that has a very specific uh, skill level. There's no skill put on that because this is in relation to work on 7671 elements. Let's go. And we'll save that. And as we save that one, pretend person and no skill are both highlighted in black as just being a non electro technical person. So this is where businesses are. I think you've probably done this, Darren. Use it for staff who aren't electrical. Uh, yeah, we can we can put everyone in there. So some of our contract managers um and other non-technical offices we can put those in just to track their training so for us as a small business it's, it's become a really good training portal and a good training matrix something maybe just to, to highlight as well when we add in the qualified supervisor we'll see the rest of those bits oh, degree of risk of work we'll see that qualified supervisor is doing some high degree of risk of work there's mr qs and um, we'll have a look they're still flagged up in amber. But when we look at the EES flag, the little box at the top that talked about the level of supervision that the qualified supervisor needs is no longer there because the supervisor's supervising themselves. So it, it reminds you that the supervisor's role is still in a risk because of the nature of the work, but it also says the supervisor doesn't have to remotely or closely or distance supervise themselves. So there is a slight change in the way that so um, that is reported depending on the degree of, of skill of the operative in there. And the QS as well, or multiple QSs, will be assessed periodically anyway by the certification body. So they Absolutely. are being. Yeah, they're already being audited externally from that side of things. So the, the certification body audits the QS, the QS audits the electro technical people underneath them. I think also from a non-electrical perspective, I'm a PDH for my company. I need to know that my multiple QSs are doing their jobs properly. So this is a good way of showing that they are assessing people. And it's a good way of looking down and seeing is something missing, what's happening. So it's quite easy and they can share information amongst themselves as well. And that's a good point then from an employer point of view, looking at the staff within the business, it gives you a little bit more transparency, I guess. Yeah, yeah, we have like we had Previously, we had forms for visits and recording things, so you can see you've got that quality management system, but this is a much quicker way of doing it. Brilliant. Uh, anything else come in there to the chat, Omar? Uh, one or two more. I think we've got time for a couple more questions. Um, is the information that's input into the system all GDPR compliant? I think that's an important one to cover off. Yes, it is. Uh, at the start of using ecoms, there's lots and lots of, uh, as with any piece of software, uh, boxes to go through. Our solicitor has been created those for you. It is a secure site. It's stored and it's only accessible by the nominated rep of the member business or by somebody he or she gives access to. ECA staff don't have access to the uh, data within there. So it's only for that nominated rep and their team. So uh, one more audience question here. Uh, I'll actually combine two of them because they are very similar. Um, how do you determine the degree of risk for an employee at multiple sites where each site might have a, a different risk level? That's fine, that's no bother. Um, you would just assign it for that one particular project, that one particular site you're working on or with at that time. So if you had multiple sites running concurrently, you assign a degree of risk for that person uh, element a degree of risk there. Alternatively, depending on what it is that they're doing, you could assign it on the worst case scenario so as the supervisor is aware of what they're doing. 
So you could add either a high degree of risk in there and keep it as high level of supervision, and then at least you cover them at that point. But also job roles change and role histories change. So you can see a, a degree of role history at the bottom. So that history might start and stop at a certain date and then start and stop again. So you can put certain history and levels in there as well, where an operative is either employed, uh, part-time employed, subcontracted, up until a certain element, a certain time. Yeah, so we have a mix of kind of contract site work and jobbing electricians. For our jobbing electricians, we just go on the highest risk because they could be required to test at any point. So we just assume level three and that's what you'd expect. Thanks. Um, perhaps a suggestion for a future feature here. Uh, can ecoms generate a QR code for each operative to demonstrate to the customer that he has the required skills and competency? Demonstrate to the customer. So can ecoms generate a QR code that a customer could scan? Sure, it probably could, but I'm not 100% sure why would want to, but uh, it certainly sounds intriguing, but Ruth's got our hand up there. Well, we, we often get asked for, depending if you work in a hospital, you might have to fill out a whole declaration of competence uh -huh. for that person. So we have prescribed forms from certain places, but it might be that you can send a PDF document or scan a QR code and produce the same individual information based on like mm. GDPR. Obviously, again, we have to submit that with RAMs very often. So you go, here you are, these are the people coming to site. This is how we know they can do what they're being expected to do, not just have they got a gold card. It's beyond that. So I can see where that would be useful. Um, can, you print oh, okay, so uh, can you print out individual operative records? Is there a like a summary? Yeah, absolutely. You can print out individual elements there. You can uh, also go from a, an auditing point of view, whether or not this would to satisfy the QR question, I doubt. There's an export function there that exports everything into an Excel uh, spreadsheet, so it can be given out to others. So if you do have um, clients who want a list of everything, then you can provide everything or sub. You can uh, specify who it is you wish to export, and then you want to export a few bits of information. Well, yeah, certainly the, uh, the, the QR code is something to look upon. Uh, to the, the person who got that question in, if you could uh, email us uh, ecoms at eca.co.uk with a suggestion, then that would be much appreciated. Brilliant, thank you. Thanks, and I'll, I'll, I've made a note of that as well, so we'll reach out uh, after the webinar. Um, Brilliant. So, a uh, question about the, the ecoms platform itself Do you have to be logged into ecoms to see the alerts notification, or um, yes. does the system email alerts to the nominated rep? No, it doesn't email anything out. It's purely just within the uh, the software itself. So we want to encourage people to try and use it more frequently. Um, however, the email action alert has been mentioned on a few occasions, so that might be something that we look for for phase two. But for phase one, we were just trying to encourage members to get in, use it, and uh, and keep an eye on the software, and make sure that they are uh, aware of not just the action alerts, but what their staffing are doing at different times. But again, another suggestion, drop it through to uh, to us and we can certainly have a look at it. Great, thanks Gary. Um, so are certificates uploaded as PDFs and can you upload uh, other kind of formats, you know, CVS files, etc.? cetera? Uh, everything can be uploaded in all sorts of different ways. There's many, many different uh, types of documents you can upload into this. PDFs are the most common one, but you can also upload lots of different file types. When I was chatting to the developers who made this, um, they tried to make it as open as possible. So it, it, can, it can take photos, it can take uh, JPEGs, it can take anything off your camera, off your phone. You should be able to upload pretty much anything into here. I believe it will also take videos as well. Great, thanks Gary. Um, I think we've got time for one more audience question before we wrap up. And uh, just before we, we do that, uh, I'll just remind everyone that we are uh, we will be developing a frequently asked questions document, uh, and we will upload that to uh, the website as well. So hopefully, if you have any uh, other questions that we haven't quite managed to get around to today, uh, you'll be able to get answers in the uh, FAQ that we'll upload um, in uh, within the next week or so. 
just on that, Omar, there's some of the file types that are accepted, uh, up to five megabyte in size as well. So that's a, a reasonably good size file. Uh, uh, and then you can keep adding more and more and more on top of that, obviously. Excellent. Thank you, Gary. Um, so final question here uh, from the audience. Can you give a user access to their own personal record so they can see and update their own records? The nominated record of the member business can allow people within their business to access it. We don't control that in any way, shape or form. We just give the nominated rep the access. After that, it's up to that nominated rep to then decide what happens within the, uh, the software within their business. The only thing you do have to be careful of is there's going to be some sensitive nature in here. You probably don't want people going in and updating one thing and everything. You probably want to try and manage that carefully. You wouldn't want to give everybody access to everything. Thanks, Gary. Um, just one final one. Uh, promise this will be the last one. Uh, you mentioned a learning. Is this one for Darren? He's been very quiet. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, open it to the floor. Um, so, you mentioned alerts for expiry of training, etc. Yes. Um, is there any way you can give a, a quick demo of that, of how that would work? Absolutely. So, if we pop over uh, a training record in. We can say it was achieved on this date. And once it's achieved on for that particular training type, we can put a valid to date. And you'll notice it's green, uh, not red. It's, it's, it's a suggestion. Once we've put a valid to date, when we get that in, you will get an alert up here with, um, depending on the, the setup that you've created, how long uh, you, you've set it up for, you'll get a notification to say that this is now due for review. So you'll get a little action alert depending on that. You could save and upload either a training type or a document on there. Let's put the Q on. Spell. Um, we'll save that without a document. And we'll now get an alert about that being up for review on whichever day we want to, to, to be aware of. Great, thank you, Gary. Um, we'll wrap up the Q&A section there. A uh, big thanks to our audience for being so uh, interactive with us today, for asking so many questions. Like I said, keep your eyes peeled really for the FAQ document that we'll be uploading um, in the next few days. Um, before we wrap up today's session, uh, just as Gary said earlier, this platform is free for ECA members. So do uh, have a play around with the software. And if you have any suggestions for improvements or things we can change or do better with ecoms, uh, Gary, what's the best way to get in touch with us? Uh, ecoms at eca.co.uk is always the best method. If you've got any suggestions, comments, thoughts, or feedback, give us as much as you possibly can. We'll take that. Um, within the uh, software, we've got links to the guide. We've also got uh, help about individual pages as well so if you do struggle do check the uh the, the user guide out it's pretty good pretty useful guide but it all also has these little information bubbles above everything and when you click on the help there's a help about that individual page as well so hopefully you should be able to find a way through but do please get in touch if you struggle gary i, I would say based on uh, my own personal experience you, you probably won't have to read the guide much uh, oh so really? that's good so uh, it's quite interesting. I, I spent uh, a little bit of time. Uh, I didn't even realise there was a guide uh, in, in truth, uh, but I am glad there is one there. Uh, but I found it, it was quite intuitive just to sort of play around with it, put bits and pieces in without using the help. I guess it's a typical bloke thing, but um, user, uh, members should find it's quite easy to use. But it is nice that it's got a help function. Thank you. Brilliant. That's good, Darren. That's nice to hear from you because uh, I know that you know who wrote that guide. So it's nice to hear that it wasn't uh, completely wasted. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you, guys. Um, we'll wrap up the session there. Um, if you are an ECA member, you will be uh, a recipient of our fortnightly member newsletter, The Source. So keep your eye out for the next edition, which should be going out this Thursday, with uh, links to the replay of today's webinar and more info about ecoms. And um, for everyone else watching, the replay will be made publicly available on our YouTube channel. That's uh, youtube.com forward slash ECA Live. And um, we'll uh, close the session there for today. A big thank you to our panelists, to Gary, to Darren and to Ruth. 
um, for your presentations today. And uh, thanks once again to our audience. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thank you.